rise as you are able. We gather in the name of God, the creator of light, Jesus, the light of the world, and the Holy Spirit, the light who illumines our path. In the season of light, let us go before God and confess how our words and actions contribute to the darkness instead of adding to the light. God of love and light, we confess that we are not always the light bearers you desire us to be. We shine the spotlight on the transgressions of others while trying to keep our own sins hidden in the dark. We burn riches by being impatient, opinionated, and judgmental. We inflame others by lashing out to the anger. We go through our days in love, in the gloom, in fear, and doubt. We let our witness become a smoldering ember until it dies out completely. Forgive us, Jesus, the everlasting life. Come to us, abide with us, our authority be able. Teach us to walk as children of the light, surrounded by your love, forgiveness, and healing. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. I invite you to turn to hymn number 283, and the hymnals in front of you will sing, O come, all ye faithful. <laughs>
First reading is taken from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They joy before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exalt when divided upon them. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish an appointment with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. 
proposed to be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Tiberius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in the hands of God, then laid him in the main room, because there was no place for them in the end. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a great multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favored. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known for us. So they went to the pace and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they had saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <laughs> Grace and peace to you from God our Savior and from our Lord Jesus who is, who was, and who is to come. One truth. Maybe you heard that no two snowflakes are alike. Every snowflake is different. And you probably know this, as you first said it. I thought I'd talk about snowflakes this season. This is the 15th Christmas sermon I've preached here at St. Martin. Not necessarily because there's no snow outside, but a lot of things to say sometimes. <laughs> but trust me, I'll bring it back to the Holy Thing. So who said this thing that no snowflakes are alike? Well, back in January 15th and 1885, a man named Wilson Bentley, who lived in Vermont, began to take photographs of snowflakes. It was not easy. In those days, cameras were very large and cumbersome, and if there was any heat at all, the snowflakes melted. But Bentley laboriously worked out a process involving black backdrops and quick time exposures and began photographing the snowflakes. During his life, he took photographs of over 5,000 snowflakes. You can use the search engine find those on Google or any other, Wilson Bentley's photographs. If you're on your phone now, I hope you're looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> so in these 5,000 photographs, each look different from any other. This display of snowflakes and major art galleries created a sensation. People were astounded, and of course, it became conventional wisdom that every snowflake is different, and no two are alike. <laughs> Another truth, some say, is that same with people. Like snowflakes, there are no two of us alike. We're all different. That's all true. But there's
there's something interesting about snowflakes that most people do not know. In 1988, Nancy Knight, a scientist, went up in an airplane in the skies over Wisconsin and studied snowflakes before they fell to the ground. In this way, in the sky, snowflakes are the same. They're not different at all. So how do they get to difference? Well, it's the descent to Earth. The winds travel at different speeds, there are different temperatures, the snowflakes get bounced around, and by the time they land bumped and bruised, they are no longer what? Reflecting on this fact, the writer Adam Gottman wrote, for the final truth about snowflakes is that they become more individual as they fall. Buffeted by the wind and time, they are translated, as think by magic, into an ever more strange and complex patterns until at last, like us, they touch the earth. And then, like us, they melt. We're all like snowflakes. We all start out alike, but the bruising and the battering of life makes us what we are. Unique individuals, the shades of breathtaking and beautiful art. God's art. The Christmas story is all about bruising and battering. Mary's unexpected pregnancy, her difficult three day journey to her cousin's home, possibly to escape the gossipers and haters of her village. The suspicious and suspicions of her husband. Only finally calmed down by a dream. And the trauma of travel far from home right before the due date. If Mary is not broken, she at least is battered and bruised. Jesus, too, is bruised. He's a part of a bigger story he didn't sign up for and may not fully understand. And that's all a prelude to becoming a political and religious refugee. Jesus was also shaped by the experience of being a stranger in a strange land, born in an unimportant and unoccupied province on the edge of a glittering empire in which he had no power and no status and no influence. He was thrust as a child from one culture to another culture and off to a third. He had a hometown. He had no hometown and very nearly no homeland. He too is unique. Now let us listen to just Jesus, Mary, and Joseph and how they are shaped by their environment, pain and backstory, as well as by their faith in and relationship with God. My name is Mary. Like snowflakes on the heavens, I started out the same as all of you. Like a snowflake falling to the earth after being blown about and buffeted by the wind, I am now different from the world. If I had to describe myself, I would say that I am a little frightened by what is happening to me. Some of the things that have made me who I am include being raised in a small town of Nazareth and being gossiped about by people in my village but also feeling support from my older cousin Elizabeth. Sometimes I feel like the birth of my child would be the most exciting thing that has ever happened. Sometimes I wonder why my husband Joseph ever doubted me. Sometimes I wonder why God thinks this is the best way to do things. But I have seen angels. I am who I am. I am a child of God. I am a part of God's life. My name is Joseph. Like snowflakes high in the heavens, I started out the same as all of you. Like a snowflake falling to the earth after being blown about and buffeted by the winds, I am now different from everyone else. If I had to describe myself, I would say that I am a civil gardener who is suddenly part of something very, very big. 
some of the things that have made me who I am include learning the trade and working hard, but also having an angel visit me in your tree to tell me to put up with what is happening with Mary. Sometimes I feel like I am glad God picked us. Sometimes I wonder why I have to do what the Romans say and travel three days with a pregnant wife because of the senses. Sometimes I wonder why God picked me when others are likely more suited than I am. I am who I am. I am a child of God. I am a part of God's plan. My name is Jesus. Like snowflakes high in the heavens, I started out the same as all of you as a Like a snowflake falling to the earth after being blown about and buffeted by the winds, I am now different from everyone else. If I had to describe myself, I would say that I am the son of Joseph, the son of Mary, yet also the son of God. Some of the things that have made me who I am include being raised in a small village, learning carpentry, growing up knowing the scriptures, and knowing the scriptures by pointing at me. Sometimes I feel like I am supported by angels, and sometimes I feel like I have been abandoned by God. Sometimes I wonder why people aren't kinder to each other. Sometimes I wonder why are they not father? Sometimes I just wonder. I am who I am. I'm a child of God. We are all children of God. I am a part of God's plan. We are all, but you should know them. I wonder if we all, at some time or another in our lives, as children or adults, sat down in front of the nativity set and imagined that we were part of this great story. Where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourselves? I'm going to recite something very similar to what was shared by our three guests. Every time I pause, I want you to think the answer to yourself. Now close your eyes if you wish and listen. And then fill in the blanks <laughs> as a pause. My name is. Like snowflakes high in the heavens, I started out the same as all of you. Like a snowflake fallen to the earth, after being blown about and buffeted by the winds, I am now different from everyone else. If I had to describe myself, I would say that I am. Some of the things that have made me who I am include Sometimes I feel like Sometimes I wonder why Sometimes I wonder why God And now repeat these words after me. I am who I am. I am who I am. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am part of God's plan. I am part of God's plan. People of God, we have heard angels arrayed like looking diamonds across the sky to tell us of the laughter of the angels about a savior. Rest in poverty, who came to save us all. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Messiah, the Christ. So as we meet tonight, we go and give this good news which has been made known to us. Merry Christmas, and God bless us, everyone. Our sermon.
in this uh, part of the Herald Angels singing number 200. <laughs>
God of all the mystery, your splendor shines this night from a manger in Bethlehem. In that place, the light of the world was humbly born in the darkness of the human night. Open our eyes to Christ's presence in the shadows of our world, so that we, like him, may be beacons of hope. God of mercy, light of life, you came in the flesh, born in human pain and joy, and you gave us power to be people of faith. Grant us grace to sing with your whole church new songs of gladness. Enable us to walk always in the ways of peace. God of mercy, God of compassion, accompany the lonely in this night and calm the distress. Bring hope to the despair and in peace to troubled hearts. Bless those who care for the sick and injured. Guide their hands as instruments of your steadfast love and blessing for all people. God of mercy, grant wisdom to all who bear public office in our land and undergird the efforts of those committed to justice for all. Protect the police and emergency workers who seek our safety and well-being. God of mercy, fill our hearts and lives with the song of the angels so that we may evermore give glory to your holy name and live as people of compassion and agents of reconciliation. God of mercy, we remember those who have loved and served you in your church on earth, especially we recall those who have died in the past year and now rest in your dear presence. Keep us united with all the faithful in your whole church throughout the ages. God of mercy, to you, eternal God, on this holy night, we give you praise and thanks, now and forever. Congregation, may you be seated, collect our tithes and offerings. Thank you. 
the everlasting life.
Why do you turn on the mic or the email? In the beginning was the word. In the beginning, when God began to create the heavens and the earth. And the word was with God, and the word was God. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the Spirit from God swept over the face of the waters. He was in the beginning with God, all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And God saw that the light was good. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but God. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory and glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. From the fullness of the Word made flesh, we have all received grace upon grace. I invite you to stand as we sing silent night. <laughs>
Yeah. Uh-huh. 